Have you ever noticed when somebody says, oh, there's just all kinds of things going on, and they'll make that sort of gesture. Have you ever noticed that that gesture is more than just a little bit appropriate? That it actually has a physical analog in terms of things swirling around us. Or someone might say, oh, you know, the emails are coming in like rain. And they'll make a gesture like that. That's not a coincidence. As it turns out, we think with our bodies. And so our thought is actually not only reflected in and not just as an excrescence, not just as something unnecessary. We don't make these gestures without purpose. The gestures actually facilitate thought. They help us to think through something, and they are arguably a part of thought. That's one of the keys here, is that our thought is embodied in a certain way, such that without the hand gestures, without the movements, without the sensations of actually being in a body and working our body, manipulating our body, the thought itself is actually different. Try this as an experiment. Talk to someone about driving what it's like to actually drive and watch the thought process. As we're driving in the story, we might make motions that are associated with the act of actually driving. And you might notice that if you're talking to someone about it while you're actually doing it in a car, the experience is enhanced even more. The experience is even more qualitatively different because the thought itself is embodied. It is enriched by the experience. And there is actually something different about the thought when we are in the midst of that experience. That's one of the things, arguably, that is missing from artificial intelligence right now, is an embodied experience of thought. Right now, the AIs are operating on an almost platonic model. For Plato, the body was the prison house of the mind. And so the mind, we're always told and have been accustomed to thinking, would be better off if it didn't have to worry about the body, if we could get away from the encumbrance of the body, the difficulties of the body. But unfortunately, when we do that, there's a certain portion of our thought that's missing. It's as if part of what it is that makes thought possible would actually be missing. And that's a significant problem. One of the ways that this manifests that doesn't often get discussed is in transfer learning. So one of the things that we do when we gesticulate and we're trying to convey something to someone is to mirror that physical experience in the other person's model of mind. Here's what I mean. When someone watches you gesticulate, when you watch someone move their hands and do this sort of swirling thing to indicate that chaos is going on, or they're backing up in fear, or whatever it might happen to be, those nonverbal signals not only help their thought, but they help you to understand their thought, which is one of the reasons that video, as we've all discovered in the last few years, is a much richer medium than audio. And so this is something that is fundamentally, or at least has been missing from artificial intelligence to date. This is another reason to be excited about why it is that AI is going multimodal and we're dealing with more than just words. And it's possible then to try and deal with these gestures and with the different intonations of sound and how it is that all of those things reflect not only experiences, cultural standards, implicit thought, All sorts of things, all sorts of richness is possible in our communication medium above and beyond the bare words themselves.